and face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with just records the Scarander. And we're going up against Aiden Rikis Bright, who is a follower on Twitter and YouTube, and a very, very good Wi Fi battle in general. And I was looking for records of Wi Fi battles yesterday because I had a very, very concept heavy team uh, going on because a Pokemon being up means that things have knockoff now which is awesome like I, I miss knockoff uh, like a lot so that, that's great so anyway he was really honest with he is gonna bring some of a meta heavy team but we see of course Alolan Golem and Miss Major so you know I, I relaxed a bit even though I clearly see Metagross, Shapido, Garchomp and Bustle which clearly are dangerous as all hell but at least, you know, it's not the, the most... It's not a Lily team, which helped me quite relax, honestly. So my team that I'm bringing is a Suicide Lead Azel with Stealth Rocks, Knockoff, Explosion, and Taunt. And then we have Nido King, a Life Reversion, Darmanitan, Adamant Bandit, Tyrantrum, due to, of course, the Who Was Really Better episode. I really want to showcase how ferocious that Pokemon could be. Bandit version, Adamant at that, too. Then, of course, we have Tornadoes with Flying Seeds to be able to land a Hurricane, because that could be nice. <laughs> of course, with Grass Knot, U-Turn, and Tailwind, which is definitely the whole concept of this team. Together, with, of course, Wimsicott with, with Moonblast, Kick it Rain, U-Turn, and Tailwind. So the idea here is to set up early Tailwind, but also get up Rocks. So I saw that he doesn't have any Spinner, which means I'm going to set up Rocks. That's, that, that's all I want. So, yeah, with all that said, let's, of course, go into the game. So, from the get-go, he will lead off with Miss Majors. Which was kind of, ah, eh, damn. But I at least felt that, alright, the, the likelihood of he being Sash is very small, but I could at least go for a knockoff anyway, because I will be able to outspeed him about it. I very, 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 very much see unlikely that it would lead him off with a somewhat of a scarf set. Now, he's a Coldberry, and that is really common. And I, somewhere, you know, deep down, I did kind of feel that that was a possibility. Though it goes for the Willow Wisp, and I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I should have taunted. So anyway, from this point, clearly my sash is broken. I feel that you know, a Shadow Ball probably takes me out. Um, because Aza was not that bold, because I felt, alright, let's get those rocks up and you know, they don't call that day. And then bring in something more useful. As uh, He's going to go for that Shadow Ball. And um, it doesn't take me out, which is great. But at the same time, I, I'm still burned. So there is really nothing happening here. So I was thinking, alright. I could go for a taunt so nothing that comes in can get burned because that is you know, uh, that is helpful to, to say the least. It's really enough I could do at this point anyway and I feel Aesil did its part here but like I said here I'm <laughs> kinda kinda screwed up with a knockoff there. I should probably go for a taunt. So that did not go. I didn't think about that at the time. Uh, so anyway I bring tornadoes I and mean, I am able to outspeed so it's kind of overdoing it but at the same time I haven't spawned this again for me. Uh, I don't try to go for a flying sea hurricane because I kind of felt that I could possibly save that, or that was my initial thought. As he brings in Intel inside, which is Metagross, and I'm thinking, okay, I, I don't have a switch in here. <laughs> Damn it. So I'm actually forced to go for a Tailwind anyway. Kind of felt that it was unfortunate I didn't go have Heat Wave. That would probably be more helpful at this time, or you no know, Dark Pulse, or whatever, really. So he's gonna go for a Meteor Mash, and that just pops my Tornadoes. I mean, Tornadoes just get so much damage onto it. And uh, I should try to preserve my Tornadoes here, but he goes for Pursuit. And I, I mean, what can I say? I mean, that was that was an awesome play for my opponent. I, I, I lost him there. So anyway, I'm gonna sit in Jum Jum, which of course is my Darmanitan. I'm just gonna go for that Band of Play Blitz. I kind of figure that he has no switching for this anyway. And uh, that's really my initial thought was basically, you know, I was speeding his whole team now. Let's let's see how many times I can go for a flip blitz without losing him. As he'll send in his guard chomp, and as stated here, I'm I really, really, really couldn't risk him being, you know, a uh, scarf set and like that. I kind of felt that this will probably be my only chance of getting heavy damage onto it. So I'm actually just keeps going for the flip blitz. And look at this. Now this is a resistant hit, right? But you see this? You see this damage? That's that's great, and um, clearly though um, he goes for fire effect, predicting of course Whimsicott to come in. So definitely not a bad play by any sense of animation. Consider of course that Tailwind sadly will peter out. Though luckily I should say, due to 
that he actually showcases his life orb, I don't have to risk the scarf, which means my Whimsicott can come in safely. And if my Whimsicott can come in safely, that means that we can freaking kill this. And <laughs> which means I actually have a proper response for it. Because I was really fearing that this guard champ could have been a scarf set. And if that was the case, then I don't necessarily know how I could have played around it in the long run. So it's not the long time threat for me due to, of course, the set I'm having, of course, over and over again. Tailwind, so I still have one chance of setting up Tailwind. And the only big threat he has left is actually his Sharpedo. I kind of feel like Sharpedo is the one I'm going to have trouble dealing with in the long run. Which makes that even better that it sends that in. Now, I have two options. I either go for a Tailwind here and be able to outspeed him, but there is a risk with that. And that is something that sadly he gets me right here. That if I go for a Tailwind and he actually attacks me, I'll lose Whimsicott. So I'm better off going for a Giga Drain or a Moonblast trying to attack him. Which clearly I fail here and there's really nothing can do. But I still with Prankster is able to outspeed him uh, and get the Tailwind up. And of course my my Pokemons that are remaining are faster than a plus one Sharpedo. So the series of plays here kind of felt dumb. But it was definitely the place I had to make because I couldn't risk the damage I put onto any of my remaining Pokemon. And at this point I felt that, you know, I have more than enough turn of actually pulling this off. And quite honestly, you know, if I have to pull something, then this is probably gonna be it. So I'm gonna send in Needlehog, which of course is my Nido King. And a Sludge Wave is definitely KOing this Sharpedo as he goes to Protect. And I was like, oh, okay, this, this is his play. He's gonna stall out the Tailwind. I see you. And I definitely see him switching in Golem here on after. So I'm actually gonna go for Nerve Power predicting his switch out. Which is awesome. Now Golem for him is pretty darn useless versus one of my remaining Pokemon. So it's not a bad play by any sense of imagination, but it definitely does foreseen that um, he can't necessarily use that and doesn't I don't lose any tailwind turn, which means that I actually have a tailwind turn left to of course this Sharpedo, which means that he has to go for another protect. I will definitely see this one happening, so I definitely felt that he must go for Protect, so I must send in Hauser. Hauser, my, of course, Tarantrum is the only Mon that is not one-hit KO'd by, of course, the Sharpedo. So I knew that this was my play to make, I really, really couldn't make another call, as I was predicting that it's very likely for him of actually not sacking the Sharpedo, so I feel like I have to go for Head Smash in case Bustle comes in. Now, that does not happen, which is great, because that means that I have a chance of winning now, because I do land the Head Smash, which is just, you know, that's that's always an issue with Head Smash, you know, whether or not you connect him. So, he's gonna send in Malaria, just awesome name. And, Bustle actually are bigger than Tarantrum, it actually towers over Tarantrum. So, I do connect the Head Smash here, and like I said, it's a banded Head Smash. And look at this, it's so close of killing him, it does so much damage, but it definitely isn't enough, sadly, and the Earthquake will KO my Tarantrum. But it's alright, because we saw, of course, that Tarantrum did outspeed, of course, the Bustle, which means that my switch in here, which of course is my last Pokemon, Nido King, does outspeed him too. Which is great, because had it been a Scarf variant of Bustle, I would have been screwed, there was no way I was gonna win if that was the case. But I actually get an opening, and I'm very glad with the outcome of this battle, because I felt that I played really, really aggressively, and left so little room for you know, errors from my side, and me still coming out on top, yeah, I mean, I, I needed a win like this. I definitely needed to feel that, you know, at least I had a sense of imagination what I was doing and what I was trying to create. Now, granted, I will say this to, of course, Icky Sprite, I think it plays a really, really nice game here, and the last predictions game he played against me, Almost paid off enough for him, of course, win. But yeah, you know, quite honestly though, I mean, the Garchomp was a super threat for me. The Metagross, if it had been a Mega, would have been a super threat. Sharpedo was a super threat. It just keeps on coming. I think uh, my opponent here plays the start of the game really, really nicely because he actually gets my e still kind of whittled down really, really easily early. He gets rid of my Tornadoes really early, which was probably one of the few that actually outspeeded enough mods to become a threat. And, um, uh, it basically became a game of whether or not I can predict it right in a, on a you know short term time. And while I do do that to some extent, I do believe that also my opponent does the same thing. And it came down to, of course, whether or not the last <laughs> switches was right. And I think I got that. You know, um, but like I said, it was definitely 
<laughs> it was more a battle of brains than actually pure power, which was something that I was definitely not adjusting myself to or expected. Now the concept team that I'm bringing here, it's not perfect. It has issues and um, Tarantra probably isn't that much suitable for it, but I just really want to use that. For those guys who want to actually try out a similar team, I actually encourage you guys to actually put in <laughs> actually bustle in this team. It's fucking great. Uh, it's abandoned bustle and also maybe using instead of Nido King actually using Mega Charpedo. Uh, it's a smarter synergy overall. But, but that's just my initial thought if you guys want to have something that is built for OU that is with Tailwind support in mind. So anyway guys of course thank you for watching and thank you for the game. That was great. Hope you guys enjoyed this battle and I'll see you of course next time. Until then take care. Bye.